Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to do a bit of a preparation project for the upcoming Q0100 video I'm planning to make. Um, I'm going to build a very basic bias T today um, after the guide of uh, the SOTA Beams website. They wrote a very nice blog post about the bias T for the Q0100 station. I'm going to link it down in the descriptions and you can build your own if you want. Uh, bias T is basically a small, very basic circuit that lets you uh, power a device um, via the coaxial cable. So there flows power over the cable and also um, the RF signal. Um, in our case, we want to power the LMB and therefore we need the bias T. The things we are going to need is a small piece of perf board or proto board, two connectors you want to use. I'm using um, female SMA connectors, a capacitor. I'm using a 100 picofarad capacitor as mentioned in the guide from SOTA beams. A wire to make our coil and a normal cable where you put the power over. The first thing we have to do is to mount our connectors. Um, I have, I'm using very basic SMA connectors I have laying around here. Um, in my case, I'm going to cut away the insulation here and solder it on to the perf board. The next step is to mount the um, capacitor. In our case, we need to um, connect the um, inner conductors of our connector with the capacitor. So I'm going to place the connector on the upper side and I'm going to put this um, in a little bit more in the middle and then I am fill it through another hole here and connect it. Make sure the, the lines um, of the connectors or the conductors are as short as possible. Um, because of the quite high RF signals, the output frequency of our LMB, if it's not um, modified in some way, will be around 739 megahertz. I'm going to cut the excess um, leads of the parts here a bit and then I'm going to solder it onto the connectors in the middle. So we have soldered our 100 um, picofarad capacitor in between the... Now we have to form a coil and then we are going to solder in the coil. Um, the coil should be eight turns of a length of about five millimeters um, with a diameter of about five millimeters. I'm going to use my um, uh, head of the soldering iron um, as a diameter gauge. This has exactly five millimeters and we have one turn, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
turns here. Um, you could surely use some um, smaller diameter uh, part here because the spring tension of the, the wire will um, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, here we have our coil now. Um, <clears throat> if you are using the same wire as me, uh, there is insulation on the, the wire, so make sure you, um, you scrap it away before soldering. Um, I'm going to solder the coil between the inner connector on one side and some pad on the outside here. Therefore I'm going to um, cut the uh, excessive wire on both sides a bit and I'm also using the plate of a cutter knife to um, remove the coating. I'm going to solder the one side of the coil onto the, the lead of the capacitor here. And I'm going to trim off the lead of the coil here a bit. And on the other side, I'm going to um, fiddle it through a hole here again and then solder it on the outside. I'm going to check the continuity um, of the coil because I'm not 100% sure if we got it here. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we have to make a connection between the, the housings of the, the connectors. This will be our ground connection. And then we can solder in the cables. We can use some solder to make a bridge on the perf board here. And we can also put in some um, trims of some parts we used to make the, the soldering a little bit easier. Now I'm going to solder the, the bridge on the connector. This might take some time because the connector itself has quite a high thermal um, mass. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, we have basically finished um, the LMB. I'm going to attach um, some wires now. Um, I'm going to use a black wire for the ground uh, connection and the red wire for the positive connection. The voltages we're going to apply will be between um, 13 and 18 volts DC. Um, with the different voltage you can um, switch the LMB into receiving a vertical or a horizontal polarized signal. In our case we're using the higher voltage for the white band 
um, DA TV transmissions and the lower voltage for the narrow band SSB transmissions. So I'm going to solder the cables here. Um, the plus cable will be soldered to the um, coil and the negative side of the cable will be soldered to the connector. Okay, now we are basically finished. Now the last thing we're going to do since we have everything um, soldered is to test the bias T. Therefore we're going to apply a DC voltage onto our connectors. Um, in my case it's around 13.6 uh, volts. Um, there will be no issue because we haven't connected anything. Um, and we are going to set the multimeter on volt DC and we are going to probe the output connector um, on the inner connector and on the housing. Here you can see we have 13.65 volts. Um, this is what we needed or what we need or what we expected. And we're going to probe the um, input connector. And there we have nothing. So this should basically be um, the thing we want. Uh, I haven't something here to um, measure the RF capabilities of this LMB. Um, but we are going to try it in the next video about Q0100. Um, the basic function of a bias T is, as I said, it should um, it should block the DC voltage from going back into our um, receiver on this side and um, this part is done by the um, capacitor. It should forward the DC voltage on the output uh, connector. This part is done um, over the coil and also the coil protects um, that there is no RF going into the um, DC leads where we feed in our DC voltage. Um, make sure you check out the website from Sota Beams. He has um, explained it really, really nice so that even I could understand um, the things around uh, bias, the bias T. Um, I will link it in the description and thanks a lot to them for doing such a great guide. Um, I'm going to test these, this bias T later and I'm pretty sure it works nice. Um, I know that you can purchase or buy very um, good or very basic bias T's for a couple of dollars or euros or pound. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't have any here and also I wanted to test this and try this out. So on the next video, we are going to uh, check if this very basic bias T works as it should. I'm pretty sure it will, but maybe we get some surprises. and. Thank you for watching and I wish you a nice day.